Hello and welcome. I'm Brian Bailey, Technical Editor for Semiconductor Engineering. I'm speaking today with David Abercrombie, Program Manager for the Advanced Physical Verification Methodology at Mentographics. In the past, I've spoken to David about double patterning. Today, I start by asking him what we need to know about triple and quadruple patterning and when these are going to become important things for you to know about and to deal with in your designs. Okay, well, certainly double patterning was the key to getting us to 20 nanometer. So everything below 28, uh, starting at 20, needed double patterning. Uh, that carried us through uh, to 16 slash 14. Uh, but that was a bit of a misnomer because uh, that particular technology node, the back end layers didn't actually shrink. It was just the front end uh, was shrunk and turned into a FinFET. Uh, so the back end of the 16, 14 nanometer node is really the same basic dimensions and technology as the 20 nanometer node. So all, everything stayed DP, everything stayed the same. Uh, the FinFET itself, uh, used a new form of double patterning called self-aligned double patterning, but uh, it was implementable completely by the manufacturing side. The designer didn't have to deal with that, uh, anything new in design to accommodate that. So the designer is invisible. He doesn't uh, realize necessarily that any type of multi-patterning is going on. So for the designer, everything stayed the same through 14 and 16. But at 10 nanometer, it's a true shrink, uh, the back end shrinks, and uh, double patterning is not sufficient to handle all the layers. You will still see double patterning. There's double patterning is still occurring at uh, some of the layers, but you'll see new techniques show up. Uh, I think most notably uh, triple and quadruple patterning type approaches, which I think would be good to talk about here to kind of compare and contrast. How does that make things different? Uh, but which layers are likely to be affected with the new techniques and will double patterning then move to other layers that it wasn't before? Uh, I won't move to other layers that it wasn't before. Mostly the layers, uh, just layers that were DP will become TP or QP. We're seeing particularly like the redistribution contact layer becoming uh, like a quadruple type patterning process. The Metal one, in some cases, becoming trouble patterning at some foundries. Uh, the VIA layers uh, probably stay in double patterning. Um, so mainly the contact in the first metal, we're seeing the DP and TP show up. Uh, and then that'll probably, as we go to seven, more layers will be TP or QP, or there's even discussion of, of we're calling it 5LE because PP just doesn't sound right. Uh, Penta patterning, so. <laughs> uh, but uh, it'll continue to evolve. So as this, the nodes shrink, you're going to see more triple, more types of multi patterning on more and more layers. Now, now you alluded to the fact that with double patterning, the designer didn't really have to know about it. But you said that the designer was going to have to get involved with uh, some of the new techniques. Well, let me clarify that one. For, double, for traditional litho etch, litho etch, double patterning the, uh, that we've been talking about a lot, the designer is involved. What I'm referring to is the FinFET layer uh, at 16 nanometer. It uses a different type of double patterning from what the industry's been using at 20. Uh, and that one, the designer didn't have to deal with. But uh, the 20 nanometer metal layers, the 20 nanometer contact layers are double patterned. The VIA layers are double patterned. The designer had to deal with that. They had to do the either the decomposition or at least do the checks that guarantee it was decomposable. Um, and that remained true at 14 and 16 because everything stayed the same in the back end. Now at 10, we're seeing the contact layers, the metal one layer potentially moving to quadruple and triple patterning. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting thing because on the surface it would seem not too difficult to make that transition. You just go from two colors to three colors. What's the difference? <laughs> One more color. <laughs> or two more colors in the case of quad patterning. Uh, and in a lot of cases, it actually makes things easier. Uh, with more colors to choose from, you can solve more complicated 
coloring problems because you got more knobs to turn. You got more options to color with. So, in some senses, uh, the move to triple and quadruple patterning uh, mean fewer complications in design because more things are inherently decomposable because there's more colors. Um, it's a higher cost because every time you add a mask layer, you go from two to three or three to four, uh, you need a whole new, uh, you have to pay for the mask, which are a million or two million dollars a piece, and you have to uh, run it through the steppers and the etches and stuff in the process fab, so it adds cycle time, it adds cost to manufacturing, so your costs go up, uh, so there's certainly a trade-off. You can't just willy-nilly add mask layers. And um, presumably there would be some yield issues associated with that as well. Yes, I mean the biggest challenge to starting a double patterning is the alignment of the two masks. You print and etch each pattern separately. You used, to, you used to be printing all the shapes at once. So the only, the, the process challenge was aligning all of those patterns to all the patterns that had previously existed. You're just aligning all of them at once. Now with double patterning, you're aligning half of them to everything that was there. And now you got to print again and align that to everything that's there. And now these can misalign to each other. So you've got a, 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 no, a new uh, order of misalignment to deal with. Um, and that's why at 20 and 16, uh, there were additional parasitic extraction corners added to account for this new variability of capacitance change between shapes on the same layer. Now you go to three patterns all misaligned to each other, or four patterns all misaligned to each other. More variability, more challenge to control. So you'll probably see increased um, variation in those corners for extraction uh, to come to account for the variability. And that's the challenge for the fab is to try to control that as much as they can. Uh, but for the designer, uh, you know, other than paying more out of the pocket to make the, <laughs> make the mask and the wafers, uh, it would seem to be as simple as just adding another color. But that's, I think, the really important thing to talk about is the move from double to triple and quadruple really changes almost everything. <laughs> and uh, that's been a very big challenge to us and required a lot of work with the foundries to figure out how to deal with them. Uh, and it will make uh, visible changes to the designer in terms of how they interact with the tool, what they have to account for, and the types of errors they'll see. Now, you said that there was not as much difference between triple patterning and quadruple patterning right. as going between double and triple. It mm -hmm. would seem as though the run times would be even more of a problem with quadruple patterning. Well, it's, it's a little bit of a trade-off. The, the fundamental change where DP is always deterministic in one pass and triple patterning, you might have to backtrack and change your choices, that still holds for quadruple. You might, you might make a choice between four colors now and go back and say, ooh, I should have chosen a different color. Okay, you have that same scenario. Uh, on the one hand, you see the problem is, oh, maybe worse, because there's more colors, there's more choices I could have made. Yes, that's true, but the reverse is also true. When I make a choice, because there's so many options, when I get to a point of contention, I've got four choices to get around that contention. So, I, so they kind of trade off. We've seen a kind of similar... Um, runtime complexity um, correlation between TP and QP, uh, but fundamentally different from DP. Just you know, kind of draw a line there. QP, pretty similar, not dramatically differently. Trade-offs kind of counterbalance each other, but t both totally different from DP. They both have this inherent problem. Thank you, David. In the next part of this video series, David will be looking at triple patterning and some of the algorithms that are used to color the, uh, the, the design.